Hello and welcome to worship. My name is Lindsay Drake and I serve on staff here at Collegiate Wesley and I'm so glad to be worshiping with you today. As we gather together for worship, let's take a moment to fill out our connection cards. This is how we stay connected to one another. For those of you watching on Facebook, you'll find a link in the comments section. And those of you watching on our website or on YouTube, you'll find our connection cards on our digital worship page. On our connection cards, there's an opportunity for you to share any prayer requests that you may have. It is an honor for us to be able to pray with and for you. So please feel free to share any prayer requests that you may have. After you filled out your digital connection card, there's also an opportunity at the bottom of the page for you to give. We appreciate the ways that you continue to be in ministry with Collegiate Wesley through your gifts. So let's all take a moment to fill out our connection cards, to share any prayer requests that you may have, and to give. God have us do? What gifts do we have that can serve God? Guide our lives and our service. Call us to ministries of hope and promise. Help us to look beyond words. Help us to see ways of service. Open our hearts and our spirits this day to receive your guidance. Help us to be those people who will bring good news to all. Come, let us worship God with thanksgiving for gifts of ministry. Let us praise God with joyful hearts for opportunities to serve. Amen.
Our scripture reading for today is Luke 4, 14 through 21. I will be reading from the Common English Translation. Hear now these words. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been raised. On the Sabbath, he went to the synagogue as he normally did and stood up to read. The synagogue assistant gave him the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the God Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the synagogue assistant and sat down. Every eye in the synagogue was fixed on him. He began to explain to them, Today, the scripture has been fulfilled just as you heard it. Greetings from Memphis, Tennessee. My name is Lauren Loonsfoot, and I'm the Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministries for Collegiate and the Wesley Center Campus Minister. I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about the organizations that the high school youth served with on their service trip to Memphis. We served at three distinct mission organizations, and so I'm going to share about the first one here. We were at the Mid-South Food Bank for two of our afternoons while we were here in Memphis. And that is the large food bank in the area that resources mobile food banks and smaller food pantries. They are the central hub, the warehouse that processes the large quantity of donations that they receive. So Mid-South Food Bank currently distributes an average of 4 million meals a month through a network of 300 partner agencies in 12 counties in Tennessee, West Tennessee, 18 counties in North Mississippi, and one county in Arkansas. While we were there, we packaged and distributed foods that were processed from donations. So we went through a very large tubs of donations, and then we would check them for the expiration date to make sure that they were sealed properly, and then would sort them according to categories. And then from those categories, some of our team members would box them up and put them on pallets. So that way they can help distribute the food and have it in an organized fashion, depending on what people and agencies need. The next organization that we helped at was Catholic Charities of West Tennessee. When we were there, we did a variety of projects. We helped with a drive through mobile food bank. We helped hand out meals to homeless folks. We helped with their clothing closet to give homeless people their clothes so they could come up and say, here's some items I'm looking for. And then some of our group members would go and look in the pantry to see if we had those items for them and then brought them back. We did some landscaping, we organized donations. We had a really great time while we were there and learned a lot about their organization. They're growing, they're actually working on developing even more ways to serve the community. So here's a little bit about the Catholic Charities of West Tennessee. It's an essential organization in the greater Memphis area where the second highest rate of poverty in cities over 500,000 people presents persistent challenges for thousands of the neighbors. Memphis has seen a 13% growth in the percentage of its population living, living in high poverty neighborhoods since 1980, over 30% of the poverty rate, with 43% now living in high poverty neighborhoods. A strong indicator for neighborhood health is food security. The national average for food insecurity is 10.5%, meaning that one in 10 families have no clear access to their next meal. One in 10 families, this is nationwide. Now in Tennessee, the average is 12.5 statewide. And in Memphis, it's 17.8 or 1.6. Families with children in Memphis who have no access to their next meal is at an all time high 
at, of one in five. So one in five families don't know where their next meal is going to be coming from. Now, COVID-19 unemployment has resulted in more families seeking supplemental food support and many for the first time. So Catholic Charities of West Tennessee has responded to this need by increasing its capacity for food support by 100%, and it's preparing to increase by another 50% in the coming year. So while we were there and we saw the mobile food pantry, people could come through the line in their cars or even walk up, grab a food box that had 15 meals in it. And you could get as many food boxes depending on how many family members that you had in there. So it was really interesting to hear about the ways that they're helping with the food insecurity in the neighborhood that their church building is located in. Now, the next organization that we helped with was the Iona Burrito Ministry. The Iona Burrito Ministry is a group of individuals who come together to make burritos and then hand them out on Tuesdays. So while we were there, we made 160 burritos. They put two burritos in a bag and then everybody could get a bag and we ran out of burritos. So we served over 80 um, people for the burritos. And they also have a clothing pantry, kind of like uh, the Catholic charities where people could tell us what they were looking for. We would go through and pick out the donations and then bring them to them. Now with COVID, some of these things have had to go to more of a volunteer picking out the clothes versus the individual being able to go and look and, and choose their own items because of COVID that has kind of changed things a little bit. So while we were at the burrito ministry, we got to hear about how it started. We got to hear about the reason why they do it. And it's a really fascinating story. One of the people that was attending the church had this call to be a pastor. And his call was specifically to be a pastor to those that were homeless. So he sold all of his belongings, gave everything away, had no savings, and he lived as a homeless person for three months to feel like he could understand better the experiences and the needs. And he went from different cities to um, see how he was welcomed, specifically in churches. How would churches welcome him as he was homeless? And he said that most of them were very welcoming to him. And he actually met a woman who was giving out burritos to people and she said, this is what I can do. I, she was making that at her home. And he went and helped her and then developed this burrito ministry that has popped up in different areas now around the country. Um, it seems really simple, but it makes a really big impact. It's portable, you don't need utensils, it's easy to heat up if you have access to heating up something. If you don't, it's a compact meal and that really is helpful. So while we were there, we got to meet a lot of volunteers and other volunteers and who told us more about their stories. And it's interesting at every place that we volunteered at, we met people who had connections to Iowa, who lived in Iowa. So it was fun to see how those connections across the, the nation can happen. So we learned a lot on our experiences and we are so thankful to have been working with these agencies in the ways that they welcomed us and let us experience the work that they're doing. And it gave us some thoughts of how we can take this work into our own community and aim. So we're very thankful for your support for this trip to happen. There's a lot that happens on these trips. You know, we do a lot of work in our own town, in our areas, because that's extremely important. But when you're able to step out of your comfort zone, out of your surroundings, you learn a little bit more about, um, well, one, we learned ideas that we can do, but you learn a little bit more about yourself too. And it really helps the group uh, connect and bond. So we thank you for supporting this um, endeavor and for us to go out and serve and to continue to show the way that Jesus leads us, which is to take care of people and to help where we can. So we, again, just want to thank you. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about what we've been doing. And next, you're going to hear from the youth about what this experience meant to them, where they saw God, and what they learned. So I hope you enjoy hearing a little bit about what they would like to say to you. My name is Elizabeth Orth, and this week I saw God at the Burrito Ministry. Barry and all the volunteers were so kind and welcoming, and watching the community of volunteers and homeless people come together when we started handing out burritos was truly amazing. I learned that homelessness is not caused by one singular factor and cannot all be solved with one simple solution. The three causes of homelessness are mental health, addiction, and circumstances. Circumstances have the easiest solution, 
but helping mental health and addiction is a factor that needs more work. My favorite memory from this week was spending time with the group. From late night games to van rides, we had so much fun and I couldn't have asked for a better group. My name is Justin Wilson. I saw God and Carol. At Catholic Charities, she worked out on the porch taking orders for clothes. She was so nice and genuinely wanted to get everyone clothing. There were times when they didn't have the right sizes, so she got something close, brought it out to them, and said that they were always welcome to it. My favorite memory is going to be every night. I mean every single night. We stayed up playing games around the table. No matter the game, we always made it fun and had a great time playing them. This brought me closer to these people in a way I had never thought possible. Oh, and the food? Incredible. What did I take away? I learned that there are three reasons for homelessness. There are addiction, mental health, and circumstantial. Usually circumstantial is the group with the most help available to them. Hi, I'm Zach Hansen. I saw God this week in Germany, the guy that worked at the Mid-South Food Bank. He always had a positive attitude and always respectfully helped any one of us whenever we needed help with what section a food item needed to go in. I learned the three ways someone becomes homeless. Number one is mental illness, number two is addiction, and number three is situational. My favorite memory was spending time working at each place and playing games with everyone. I enjoyed getting to meet new people and learn more about the ones I already knew in our group. Hi, my name's Carson. I saw God in a man named Ben. Ben was an organizer at the Catholic Charities Church. He was a great influence on the homeless people and talked to them like a friend. He was someone everyone look, could look up to for advice or come to with questions. Something that impacted me on this church was when I got a sense of how many homeless people were in Memphis. In Iowa, you rarely see any homeless people, but in Memphis, there were over 1,000 people that were homeless. It was a great experience to be able to help so many people in this time. One of my favorite things that I got to do in Memphis was exploring Beale Street. Between the people, the stores, and the food, it was one of the most unique places I've ever been to and definitely one of my favorites. Hi, I'm Dave Matulak, and I saw God this week at all the places we helped do ministry. Uh, one was the Catholic Charity staff. There's Carol, Grace, Lisa, Mandy, and Ben. Uh, and that at that location, they helped feed and clothe uh, the homeless. And, and just seeing how they interact with them, showing them compassion and grace uh, due to their circumstances, it, it was great to see. And the other place was uh, Jeremy at uh, Mid-South Food Bank. Um, there we packaged boxes of meals that they, uh, or food that they would give out to the homeless in, in the Memphis area. His energy and, and the excitement of what he does is, is it make you want to work for him. Uh, he was a great guy and had, it, was, it was great to meet him. And and last place we did was uh, a burrito ministry where we uh, prepared burritos. It was Barry and, and several other people that helped uh, helped us uh, put the burritos together and then uh, serve them to the homeless and down in the Memphis area also. And and again, similar to the Catholic Charities, showing the compassion to uh, to the people that they serve food and knowing a lot of them by first names. Uh, it's kind of like a little family down down there between the homeless and also the, the, the people that help them. They all know each other and, and care for each other. So it's great service to see. And one thing I did learn is what uh, I think many of us learned on this trip was um, the three main reasons people are homeless. Uh, there are situational and circumstantial um, uh, reasons like uh, losing a job of, or going on disability or a veteran who, who can't uh, find a job. Um, so those are, those are things that, that can, uh, we have resources out there that, that can help them overcome that. But the two other reasons are uh, addiction and mental illness. And those are a lot harder to, um, to combat. And also those are, are the things that kind of keep people um, 
going back to being homeless if 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 they are not. So, um, so that those uh, new things that I I I did not learn or I did not understand at the time. So it was great to understand that. And uh, one of the uh, memorable things. I mean, there are a lot here on this trip, but. Uh, one thing I do remember was uh, we were on Beale Street, uh, just just doing looking at sites, uh, and we had there was a guy that did uh, round off backflips over four to five people in line, and Justin and, and Zach were in that line. Uh, they jumped over Justin twice, and uh, and Zach did it once. Uh, if you want to see the videos, Lauren has them, so. <laughs> Feel free to ask her. She'll be glad to share those with you. And uh, one other thing that we did was uh, we went go-kart riding. And uh, that was also very memorable and fun. And just hanging out with the youth. Uh, it's a great group of kids. Um, they all get along. It, it was just really fun. A lot of laughter. Um, stomach still a little bit sore from all the laughing we did. But it was a great time. So uh, really enjoyed the trip uh, and hope to do it again. Thank you.
leading and guiding God. You have opened the doors to us for true service. We are encouraged to become involved in ministries of peace and justice. The light of promise is reflected in your spirit, which rests in each one of us. Get us ready to serve you. Guide our lives as we learn more of what you would have us do. Amen. This poem was written by Helen Steiner Rice. We cannot all be famous or be listed in who's who, but every person, great or small, has important work to do. For seldom do we realize the importance of small deeds, or to what degree of greatness unnoticed kindness leads. For it's not the big celebrity in a world of fame and praise, but it's doing unpretentiously in undistinguished way. The work that God assigned to us, unimportant as it seems, that makes our task outstanding and brings reality to dreams. So do not sit and idly wish for wider new dimensions where you can put into practice your many good intentions. But at the spot God placed you, begin at once to do little things to brighten up the lives surrounding you. If everybody brightened up the spot where they're standing, by being more considerate and a little less demanding. This dark old world would very soon eclipse the evening star if every body brightened up the corner where they are.